is beyond him. I'd like to be joined here by Hall of Fame boxing promoter Frank Warren. Eddie Hearn's going to join us as well. And let's just let's just have a look at what we're looking at. Frank, Eddie, we can see Francis Ngannou, the predator, making his way. He is some specimen. Eddie, I know he's got you very, very nervous. Very big. He's got a big neck. Uh, he's a scary guy. You know, and he was a scary guy before he did that to Tyson Fury, but now we know he's for real. And um, you know, he's a, it's the first time AJ's been outside against someone, not just in height and this, he nicks it, but in, in mass and in size. AJ will be too fast, hopefully he'll be too good and all those things, but at any moment, he has the ability to turn your lights out. And that's a very, very worrying thought with what could be down the line. You've always talked about around this fight, one word, jeopardy. It is, because he, look, they're both big punchers. And if one of them, whoever lines that first big shot, what's the mindset going to be of the guy who get, who's on the other end of it? That's going to be the intriguing thing for me. And, and it will also determine how the fight moves forward. Because if somebody gets caught, they're not going to be wanting to be making the same mistake again. So they're going to have to go to their, maybe to their plan B. So it's going to be, I think it's a really, really interesting fight, exciting fight, and I genuinely do not think it's going to go to distance. One of the things that's been spoken about is Francis Ngannou's mind, mm. his mental strength, his story, everything he's been through, and how Anthony Joshua has to take his soul. How can you take the soul of yeah, that guy? Yeah. I don't think you've got to take the soul. I just got. I think you've got to hurt him, and you've got to knock him out, because he won't that's quit. True. You know, you've got to, you've got to hit him hard enough for him to not be able to fight back, to not be able to show you how tough he is. You've got to knock him out, and that's going to be the hard thing. I said to Frank earlier, the size of his neck, he may just have a fantastic chin, and, and it's very likely that And he you've has. got to hit him anywhere, arms anywhere. Yeah. You've got to let them bums go, I, let them feel the pain. I, I think what, what one of the keys is the tempo of the fight. Yeah. You see, against Josh, against Fury, and Garnu looked like he was going to gas a few times, but Tyson went into a little bit of survival mode at the same time. If you can fight a, a good tempo against Ngannou, I do think he'll gas. But to do that, you've got to stay active, which is going to put you in jeopardy as well by staying active. Part of me just thinks, AJ, just get on your bike for 10 rounds. And, but you don't want to do that either because you don't want Ngannou walking you down. So it's got to be educated pressure, it's got to be smart, and you've got to hurt him. Is he going to do like he did in the Ruiz fight, yeah. the second fight, or is he going to be, or is he going to come forward and impose himself? He's got the tools to do it, AJ. Obviously, he's got a great jab. He's got, I mean, just, it's basic stuff. It's just one-twos. You've got to keep it nice and long. One-two, one-two, and that's what you've got to do. Keep him off balance. But that's a big ask of keeping a guy that yeah. size on the back foot all the time. I mean, that's, that, that's how I see it. I feel like that is what he needs to do. As you say, though, if you can hurt him, that, that would be ideal. But you don't want to get too obsessed with the idea of knocking him out either because that can, be, oh, no, that can yeah. be dangerous. If he gets to the end of 10 rounds and he's got a pair of seriously sore hands but he hasn't been able to get the knockout on one, you'll take that, won't you? I'll take any victory. I don't care if he goes down nine times and the other bloke goes down ten. As long as we win, it don't really matter. But, you know, it's, it's just one of them. that At the end of the fight, you just go, thank God that's over because this is a risky, risky fight. It's better he gets the sore hands and the sore ass. <laughs> yeah, very true, very true. Right, it's, it's, listen, the fight will be at a tempo. I don't think it's going to be a slow fight. I think it, it, they may just the first round just come and size each other up, but I generally think... If I was Nagano, if I'm Nagano's uh, trainer, I'll be telling him, you've got to go and put it on him, you've got, to, you've got to look for that shot, you've got to look for that big shot and let him go, you've got to hurt him. And he's got to do that. He's not going to outbox AJ. He's not going to outbox him. So that's what you've got in front of you. You've got, this, you've got him, that big lump over there, that big monster in front of you. That's what he's got. How much better can Francis Ngannou get? That was his first fight. Hey, you did don't he go know. Go? You don't know. But you, who knows? He may learn from it. He's an intelligent guy. He may learn from it. I think the trainer he's got is quite a smart guy because they got they certainly got him ready for Tyson. Although, as I said earlier, I do feel Tyson had an off night, but he's still done what he had to do. But I don't know. They, 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 they're not stupid. They know what they've got to do, but also... And also with Ben Davison and with AJ, they know what they got to do. They ain't going to take a lot of working out. It's just going to be a battle of wills on the night. It's going to that's going to be a lot of men. It's going to be a, as much as it's very, very, a very physical fight. It's going to be a battle of wills mentally as well.
Can he stop him? Is he going to try and stop him? Yeah, again, it comes down to the tough. We, we know Ngannou is going to be tough, but I don't think Fury landed a couple of shots on him and he didn't seem too faced. But AJ punches with a little bit more sharpness. And I, I don't know. I mean, I hope so. Because if you go through four or five rounds hitting him with some big shots and don't move him around, what Frank said about the mental aspect, that changes. Because you start thinking, you know, and, and Frank's right. Both fighters, I think, need to take the middle of the ring in this fight. If you're AJ, the last thing you want is Francis Ngannou walking you down. He's got to take control in the middle of the ring. He's got to use his jab. He's got to ping him back to the ropes. And, and once he hits the ropes, he's got to go twice. But also, he's got to worry about what's coming back. Because we saw it against Ngannou. He's not afraid to let his hands go when you throw. That's how he dropped Tyson that's Fury. Him, yeah. Fury landed with a big right hand, and he threw the left hook. And that's exactly what happened in the Andy Ruiz fight. And in fact, I'm absolutely petrified. Can we stop talking about this? <laughs> You're sweating up, Eddie. Eddie, Frank, wonderful speaking to you both. Thank you very much. For Back here in Riyadh, back to where you put on a great performance against Tyson Fury. The <laughs> How does it feel to be back here? Feels good. I mean, I've been here for what, seven weeks? Since London, I've been here. A lot of people are talking about overcoming your mind. Anthony Joshua said your biggest strength is your mind. Are they overlooking your boxing? Your mind, your mental strength. Are they overlooking your boxing skills? Anything, is it? That's how we roll. I don't know, usually in the step like this, they have the headset. So we can share each other in the headset, but yeah, I'm having a hard time. Well, what we can see is Anthony Joshua down there. And now the music has gone down a bit. Okay. Francis, we can chat now, we can chat. Francis, tell me, look, what, one of the main things at the launch press conference, they talked about your mind, overcoming your mind. What about your boxing? Are they overlooking your boxing? Overlooking my boxing? Mm -hmm. What do you mean by overlook, uh, if I'm overlooking my boxing? Underestimating. If I underestimate my boxing? If they're underestimating your boxing? Well, I think so. I think they underestimate me. First of all, because um, you know, again, I don't, I don't really, I can't stand here and just say, oh, I'm the best boxer ever, live, like all those stuff. Who doesn't make sense, right? But what I do know is that I'm a man. I can use some fundamental and I can fight. You know, like even without ever doing the boxing, I wouldn't give my ground, right? So I'm here doing this and then get be dedicated into it. And then I don't understand why at some point I would not believe that I will get it done. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the same thing when I get in the, in the UFC. I was in the UFC after two years. And then even two years in the sport for me, it was just like, oh, I was just having fun because it wasn't really what I wanted to do. I wanted to do boxing, but the opportunity came around two years after. And then I'm like, damn, I was in the locker room. I'm like, what's the rules again? You know? And then they was telling um, uh, our um, talking about our resume, um, our record, and this guy was a Brazilian uh, Olympic wrestler. He was dead. He was black belt jiu jitsu, and me, I was basically nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, in order to convince myself, I have to have look, you know, take my pride, and then look at myself. I'm like, I don't care whatever you say about him. He might be doing tai chi or whatever you want. At the end of the day. He's a man, I'm another one, and we're gonna check uh, check it out. You know, <laughs> I, I had to have that mindset. Otherwise, I would've just turned around. I has nothing with a guy that was Olympic this, that, 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 you know? So I, then he walks out. And those kind of things let you understand that most of the time, the fight is in our, is in our head. It's not about the techniques, it's not about this. I have seen like the best technician in the combat sport that are not really a great fighter because they don't have really have a fighting in, in them. You know, you can have all the techniques, but if you don't have fighting in you, it's going to be hard for you. Well, Andy, it's fascinating to have, uh, just to hear Francis, but fascinating to have another heavyweight contender now clearly in the mix here in Francis and Ngannou. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's very unusual for this to, to, to be the case. Just hearing you speak there, what would you say is the most difficult thing about fighting for you? What do you find most difficult about it? Well, 
everything is difficult, you know, like, um, but the, you become a fighter when you make practice this thing that are difficult for you and make it even the thing that, and get to the point that you enjoy it, you know, um, you enjoy putting yourself in that uncomfortable zone, feel uncomfortable when you start to enjoy that, then basically, even though stuff are still difficult, but you you handle it differently, you know. Like you get something, some uh, you go to to do something difficult, and then you're stressed. At the same time, you're excited. You need that excitement, like oh man, you know. I don't know. It could be inspiring or whatever. I'm like, damn, I'm gonna do ten round today. But you're excited. I'm like, oh, we're gonna bang. I don't care how it how it goes out down, but. We're gonna bang, so I'm excited. You, that gets you excited, and then when you have that fire, it gets things a little different. But if it was just like a job, like okay, let's just do it because you have to do it. If there wasn't an enjoyment, he would have been more difficult. Johnny, that's something people talk about a lot in boxing, isn't it? You have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's right, and 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 you 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 can feel. You can smell the confidence of a man that, that, that believes in his own ability. It doesn't matter what resume is in front of him, no matter what fight is in front of him. And he, he's, he's probably proved that in the shock that he gave us all December the 23rd. He's hoping to that lightning strikes twice and say, now I know what I can do. Did you, when you, after you, you fought Tyson Fury, did you walk away thinking, you know what, I could have actually done better there? Realize once you knew what you did. Whatever, what, what in whatever fight that I have been to, you know, I always think like there's always you can always do better, you know. And I think that's what uh, make you rise. That's what elevated you because the problem is that um, and then what will make fighter for most of the time is like when they get the victory, oh they are the guy or they are the champ, and they think they get everything figured out. No. You have nothing figured out. In fact, it's going to be even more difficult. And if you lose sight of that, then it's going to be very complicated. Basically, in the fight that I wasn't, basically in the fight that no, nobody was expecting me, then I get myself exposed. So the guy that is coming next time knows what he has to deal with. So it's going to be well prepared, So which is not good for me. I lose that element of surprise. So how do, can I surprise him again? What can I bring? What, what, what kind of uh, can, what can I pull off my sleeves again? To surprise him and get a win. You know, it's all it's a, it's a gamble. <laughs> well, we we can't wait to see what more surprises you've got. You keep surprising the world every time, Francis. We're going to let you go. We'll speak to you again tomorrow at the workout. Great to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Dave. Thank you. Francis Ngannou, the predator. And Johnny, I just want to speak to you quickly on this. I mean, uh, you're, again, you're a big guy. He's a bigger guy. Listen, I'm size 13 feet. He made me look like I was a size 6. <laughs> I was just checking it out. I'm just saying. <laughs> He's a big guy, but he talks. You, 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 a fighter can always tell if a fighter is, is, is trying to bluff his way through a conversation. Bluff his way. This guy, you can feel the confidence, the self-belief. He doesn't need validation from your eye. You know, this guy believes in himself and what he's got to do. So now you've got two guys that are getting in the ring Friday night that seriously believe they're going to win. And, and, and I, I, I'm, I'm struggling to think, will it even go the distance? Because once one tastes blood and gets that big power shot in, the other's going to want that as well. And so this fight could really set on fire. Well, that's their instinct. Look, they call this show Knockout Chaos. These are two big, big heavy punches. I think we're going to bring in Anthony Joshua as well very shortly. But huge, huge, heavy, heavy hands. And Francis Ngannou, once again, the underdog. And Anthony Joshua here is the clear favourite heading into Friday. It's got to be. It's, 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 it's fact. That's how it's got to be. All yours. Mm. Anthony Joshua, yep. great to see you. Great to see you back here in Riyadh. How are you feeling heading into this one? Such a great win last time. Normal. Itching to get in there now. Not long left. But you're, you're rolling into fight week with some great momentum, aren't you? This is a fourth yeah. fight in under 12 months. And, you know, you, you, it, it's not rocket science, is it? That's, that's really worked for you. Activity is a key. On your way up, you're active. You're showcasing your skills. You tend to get to the top and it all slows down. First time since 2017 I've been fighting three times in a year. It's crazy. But the activity will pay off and I think everything's going to work out for me uh, Friday for sure.
You talked to us last time about how in the preparation you'd really enjoyed, you know, just making those pads bleed in camp, you know, building up to things. And, you know, that's, that showed on the night. Yes, and we've had another good camp. It was a short turnaround, but we had another good camp. And let's go. Not much more I could say. What, what would be the key for you? Your box, the basic boxing ability? That in my book, that's what it is, your, your basic boxing ability. What do you think your key, the key for you will be? Just be relentless. Be relentless, really. Don't fold. Be relentless. Be me. And I'll get the win. Hungry. Yeah, be hungry. Be hungry, definitely. Johnny, one of the things you talked about was not getting drunk on your own yeah. success. Yeah. Tell us more about that. A, a, a common sense is this, Anthony Joshua, you, you, as far as I'm concerned, it's day and night. You know, you, the boxing ability, as far as I'm concerned, outweighs it. He's coming into our sport. Yeah. Our sport where you've been an, an Olympic champion, you've, you've been a two-time heavyweight champion in the world. You have all the ability in the world to totally outbox him. This guy shouldn't do this in our sport. Mm. When I say don't get drunk on the successes, sometimes a man's there to be hit. You think, yeah. I'm going to get a bit greedy. I'm going to do it again and then again and again. I saw when you... you oh, you, I know what you mean. You understand? So, so I saw... Something's working. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. I saw, I saw when you when you had the, the rematch with Andrew Ruiz, you showed your boxing ability. Yeah, yeah And he yeah. couldn't outbox you. Yeah, he couldn't yeah. deal with you. And this is what I'd expect here. Your boxing uh, ability would sh you should be there now. Yeah, yeah. Not the same style. Yeah, you understand. Not I the understand. same style. They're different beasts as well, but um, the same thing, yeah. Boxing ability does pay off at the end of the day. Mm. Boxing ability does pay off and it will. It definitely will. I've got to ask you this. You did the promo with him. Fantastic promo. Yeah. And behind the scenes, like you could see you holding your fist to him and him holding yeah, it to yeah, you. Yeah. What was that like? Good. Like, you know, naturally you always face off with your opponent and uh, you size them up, even though it doesn't mean anything. but. You can take something away, so it was good to actually meet my opponent face to face weeks beforehand. Got some footage, the guy's done some recording, and I can just look at that and go over it in my head what I'm going to do. So it was a good moment for me, and it's helped me during my training camp. One of the things I've heard you talk about is how actually you're not just watching his fight footage, you're watching interviews. You're trying to sort of see what's yeah. going on in his head. Tell us more about that. So I always believe, like, you know, everyone knows that sports and life is, for example, 80% mental, 20% physical. So it's easy to just watch someone's physicality, but it's always good to understand their mentality as well. So I also look at their mentality a lot, where they're at, where their head's at, what they're saying. And I know some intelligent people that can dissect what people say, where their head's at. The brain's a computer that controls all. So if your mind's in the right place, if my mind's in the right place, anyone's in for a tough night. You can, I could look good, but if I'm not in the right place mentally, I won't fight good. So that's why I try and understand my opponent's mentality. Seems in a great place, Andy. Now that makes all the sense in the world. That makes all the sense in the world because you, you just concentrate on yourself and what you can do. And, and we know, we know what you can do. We know less about what he can do, but that's not your concern. Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. Anthony, thanks for being here. We're not going to keep you any longer. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Anthony Thank Joshua. You very much. Thank you. Do you think, Yeah. Nice.